Good morning. It's Saturday, the 7th of December, 2013. Welcome along. My name's Chris Reardon. This is the live United Kingdom talk. Boys and girls, you're, you might be wondering, why are there no Christmas decorations? Because it's too early. Too early. It may be, you know, early enough now. I accept now Christmas decorations in shops. Not in homes yet. Please, another week. I'll let you go two weeks before, okay? No Christmas decorations up yet, please. Thank you. I have decided to put up a real Christmas tree this year. I haven't had a real Christmas tree since, blimey, at least 15 or 20 years. That is true. I haven't had a real Christmas tree for that long. I've got this artificial one, which is very nice. But I think, really, since Mum died... I thought to myself, I, I don't know, I mean, it's just something stopped me doing lots of things. And then I saw a film recently, um, just trying to think of the title of it, actually. Uh, oh yes, I remember now. Yeah, and so there's this husband and wife, and there's a little girl, and the little boy died years ago. And ever since the little boy died... They didn't celebrate Christmas. No tree, nothing at all. No presents, nothing. And it kind of got to got to thinking me. Um, you know, the people that have passed on don't want you to have an awful Christmas. Or not to do anything that you used to do. And I kind of thought, is that why I stopped doing it? I think that's one of the reasons I did. So this year, we're going to have the Christmas tree in the living room. And do not worry, boys and girls, there will be a short video of myself and my dear dear friend Ronnie putting up the Christmas tree you can't wait can you because we do daily short videos those of you with us uh, for this live audio video broadcast who haven't been here for a while where have you been okay may not know that I now do a daily short video okay and the way to find those is to subscribe to my YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. There you will see all of the little videos every day, a short video, somewhere between, well actually some of them are very short, between about a minute and a half and four minutes long, most of those. Okay, generally average time, two minutes. So don't forget that, keep an eye out for those short videos, they appear on my YouTube channel, subscribe, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, click the subscribe button. Uh, also, announcements, and I put little pastes on there, posts and pastes, is that what they're called? Posts and pastes, on Facebook, Facebook username, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, and also on Twitter, tweet, 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 Twitter, which I still don't get, I hate Twitter, but I'm on it, and you'll see a little announcement there every time there's a new short video, once again, twitter.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK alright so please do not put your decorations up till next week it's still too early boys and girls we can't have any tints or lights up yet far too early you put them up too early and, 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 and you, you you spoil it around the Christmas time because it comes Christmas day oh oh they're still up oh right you know you're still used to it no you've got to hold a little bit back you can't have it all at the same time everyone wants it straight away now don't they do you know what I mean everything uh, however I did receive two Christmas cards one from a lady and now regular those of you that have been with us a few years now eight years eight years I've been sitting here talking absolute crap and you're still there I can't believe it <laughs> I can't believe it got a, a, a little card here from Christine and Billy now Christine and Billy they're not viewers of the show they're people that used to know my mum, and they knew me as well as a much younger person, like 20 years ago. To Christopher, we hope you're keeping well. This is your busiest time for you, which it is, Christmas time. So take care of yourself. We never forget you. We are fine and still enjoying life here. And they're over in uh, Northern Ireland. And, you know, I told you I don't send cards. I, I, I never send cards. I don't even send letters anymore. That, that's all stopped. It's all emails now, isn't it? Yeah. Probably. I, I, I do wonder, actually, you know, if, if certainly the younger people 
Do they actually write at all at school now, or is it all on keyboards and things? I do wonder that. Anyway, um, and I get these every year. I've been, been getting these every year for 13 years. And you know, I think I've only ever replied once. How rude is that? I've only ever replied to these once. And you know, the address is there on the back. Don't even need to be a long reply, does it? Although I'm sure they might be interested in what I've been getting up to and everything, it would be nice to actually jot down a little note. And, do you know, w when I've finished the show today, maybe not today, oh, I shouldn't really, yes, today, I'm going to gonna do a little note and stick it in an envelope and post it in the post box with my, oh, I don't dare tell you this, with my letter from Lincolnshire Police you're wondering what that's about aren't you <laughs> didn't see the camera did I oh god so I've had to fill in this form saying I'm the driver of the car and all that as I might get a speed awareness course and all that business oh I got flashed by a camera when I went up to see my sister on Sunday night I'm so disappointed by myself so disappointed there I was, happily listening, listening to my podcasts of Nick Abbott from LBC. And I, I just missed the camera and flash! And it was one of those points towards you. It nearly blinds you when the bloody thing goes off to you. I tell you that now. I should sue them for danger. Let alone suing me for going a few tiny little insignificant miles over the 30. At four o'clock in the morning. I mean, what was going to happen? Anyway, that's it. So I've got to deal with that now. Yeah, so I must... Um, I, I'm going to reply to that. And I wonder if if you yourself often... Perhaps just around Christmas time even. I only get this card at Christmas. These letters at Christmas. Every year we've had fail. Do you get letters at Christmas from perhaps someone who's constantly been writing to you for years and years? Why not reply this year? Or even better still, get your letter in or your card in before they do. I'm not saying sit there uh, with with boxes of cards, cheap cards from bloody supermarkets and things like, you know, 100 cards in a box to send to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Don't do that. It's just it's a complete and utter waste of time. You know, it, it's a quick, oh it's, oh, it's from Chris, and then they put it to the side. I hope you wouldn't be like that with my cards. I hope you'd open a card for me. If I was to send one, say, Oh my God, it's from Chris Reardon, that huge celebrity in the United Kingdom. And then it would be prominently placed, possibly, in a corner of your telly. Not on top, not on the side, in a corner, so that whenever you look at the telly, you see a little picture of me. Personalised Christmas cards, that's what we need. Little pictures of me in various different poses. Perhaps I could bring out a calendar. Like Barry Manilow. I have a Barry Manilow calendar behind me, which is on the last day. Unfortunately, I forgot to see because the, the light is reflecting in it. But Barry's there with his two singers. Whenever I go to see a Barry Manilow concert, it's always got the same, one of the same singers. I'm not, not sure about the girl, I don't really notice a girl. But there's a black guy, and he's got these dreadlocks. Very good looking, and he's always singing there. What's his name? Anyone know? Wendy might know. Are you with us this morning, Wendy? Oh, bless Wendy. Wendy's got a touch of the Alzheimer's at the moment, haven't you, my darling? Oh, dear. I got a little message from her yesterday uh, saying to me, Oh, good morning, Chris. You won't believe I'm sitting here with a cup of tea uh, and a sandwich waiting for your show to start. Only to realise that it's, she's a day early. Do try and stay with us, Wendy, dear. I know it's hard at your age. The Alzheimer's is kicking in, isn't it? It really is. I mean, probably as far as Wendy's concerned, uh, she's already had Christmas, you know. Christmas was, of course, you know, 300 and, what, 20 odd days ago now. But in her little mind, it's just happened. Merry Christmas, Wendy. But do, do try and stay with us, Wendy. It's Saturday now. I bet you haven't woke up this morning, have you? Dear me. Oh, you're getting as bad as my sister. She doesn't get up at all. You know, just stays in bed all day doing nothing. She really does. She's got her own. De she's got her own show now. My sister on Babe Station. Has anyone seen it? 
Pardon? <laughs> I'm very naughty. Oh, I went to Primark. Did you see my little video, which we did in Primark this week? You must subscribe to those little videos. Oh, we've had a wonderful time. This week, one of the videos we did in Primark. Is it Primark or Primark? I can't remember. Is it Prime? Oh, hang on, it's say on the bag, wasn't it? And, um, it was a, was a four-minute job, I think. And I went in there for the first time. My sister took... I've never been in a Primark before. Never. I told my best mate Ronnie, I went to Primark, he went mad, because he's right up his own arse, Ronnie. Right up his own arse. Oh, it is Primark, with a K. Here's the bag. My sister says she likes it. The only thing she doesn't like about it is that they use paper bags. I don't see a problem with that, really, except the handle's broke. What's the problem with using um, paper bags? Oh my God, look, receipt. Let's keep that, dear. My stage clothing my allowance and I bought a couple of jumpers Christmas type jumpers which you'll note I haven't worn today Wendy was expecting me to wear Christmas jumpers today but I'm not going to because it's too early Wendy I keep telling you dear next week I've got two I've got one with um, a penguin on it which is like a green colour very nice ok w wait till I tell you the price of these in Primark Huh, you'll die when I tell you. Now, I've got to say, I don't know, don't know if it would keep you warm. It's a bit thin. You know, it's not like my thick blue one that I've got. But it'll do, it'll do. So I've got a, a, a penguin one, a green penguin one, and a navy one, which has got a picture of Santa and a big clock at the top and little socks to put your presents in. Oh no, I've left the label on that says extra large. <laughs> I'm just getting fatter and fatter while I'm sitting here, boys and girls. Fatter and fatter. It's awful. I couldn't believe it when I tried those jumpers on. And uh, I try, uh, I try the large. I don't. I think I'll be too big for the medium. I try the large. Well, the large was tight around my stomach. Terrible. Don't bloody laugh. It's awful extra large maybe they're sm my si of course my sister bless her heart she says oh they're small sizes that's what she said small sizes <laughs> um <laughs> gotta say to matt martins this morning who's in canada good morning from winnipeg manitoba canada where it is currently minus 37 degrees centigrade oh christ uh, matt Surely you don't go out in that weather, do you? How do you travel about minus 37? I don't believe you. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. One minute. I'm sure it can't be. Weather. Um, when it peg Canada now. One moment, please. Oh, my God, he's not lying either. It says minus 27 here, you liar. It's minus 27 degrees centigrade in Canada. I thought it was cold here. <laughs> 8 degrees centigrade here. Blimey. Good luck to you, rather you than me. Well, I think I'll be cancelling any trips to Canada that I might have considered making, to be honest. Anyway, he says, um, I hope it's a bit warmer in the UK. Yeah, we're about 8 degrees here this morning. I'm not cold at all. Heating's not on. The heating's gone off again. I'm so pleased about that. Very, very happy about the heating going off. Wishing you and your lovely listeners and viewers a marvellous day. Thank you, Matt. Very kind. Uh, good morning to Marge, who says, Hi there. I thought I was not going to make it this morning. Electricity went off about two hours ago, but came back on. It got a bit cold in the house. It's like 15 degrees. Oh, well, that's, she's in Fahrenheit, though, isn't it? What's 15 degrees? Oh. God, can't you all talk in one bloody language? Fahrenheit to cent it grade. One moment, please. Okay, uh, so what she say it was 15 Fahrenheit is. And that's minus nine. <laughs> You're all freezing cold today, aren't you? Electric blankets. That's what one of our MPs said. Electric. Bl I have an electric blanket. Let me tell you, it's wonderful. You don't need to have it on ages and ages and ages. All you've got to do is... What is that stuff? I've got to... 
I've got some something crusty on my trousers. What is that? It might be a little bit of gravy or something. Oh, I've just washed these. How can I? Oh, I know what that's super glue. Isn't that terrible when you get that on your trousers? So, what you thought it was what? Oh, please, 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 it's super glue. When you get the super glue on your trousers, even worse if you get it in your eye. Hello! Aye, aye, Captain! Anyway, back to the email. Uh, yes, yeah, she was a bit cold in the house. That is cold. Dear me, 15 to minus 9 centigrade she is. She says, it's nice to look outside and see the countryside dark. Haven't seen that since I was a kid. What, you've never looked out the window since you was a child, Marge? I think you're lying to me, darling. I think you might be lying. Hmm. So they're my Primark stuff. I bought some socks. Socks and a green hat. And Marge says, when, when she, Marge was watching the short video we did in Primark, and she said she liked the green hat the best, because it were various different hats. They are only about four pounds. My God, it's so cheap. Look at this, look at this. Have you ever been to a Primark? Look, right? Socks. Uh, was it five pairs? One minute. Yeah. Five pairs. Five pounds. A pound for a pair of socks, dear. So I've got two lots of those, five, five. I've got a, a beanie hat, the green hat, three pounds. Three pounds. And I've got my two jumpers, right? They were different prices, actually. The one with the, where is it now? The one with the penguin. The one with the penguin was 12 pounds. I, well, I thought that was a bargain. And then I picked up the blue one with the father Christmas and a clock. Nine pounds. All those items for thirty-four pounds. I'm well impressed. I am a Primark convert. I should not be going to any of these expensive designer shops anymore. Unless, of course, they're in the States. Where it is reasonably priced. You go to those outlet stores. I'm going to... I'm taking my uh, nephew to Florida in January. We're going to spend two weeks in Florida. Funnily enough, I got my um, confirmation thing for British Airways yesterday. Well, I mean, I booked it ages ago, but you get this email a, a couple of weeks before, two or three weeks before. Is it three weeks before? About three, three or four weeks before, I think it is. Uh, just, just to inform you that, yes, your flight is that, and your seat numbers are this. And you have a vegetarian meal for me and a normal meal for him. Ah, oh, he is going to have such a great time. Such a great time. I shall make sure of that. Now, uh, let me see if we've got uh, any little messages to read out. Or oh, Matt says, look at the wind chill. Was he sent a screenshot? What's that? What's a screenshot? Oh, are you sending me something? Oh, it's far, no, it's far, it's far too cold there, Matt. Far, far too cold. I'm not coming to Canada ever. It's too cold. What's how does it get in the summer there? Huh? <laughs> Here we go, some messages. Uh, good morning to Mark. Well, good morning to Mark Anthony Eden. Hello, Mark. How are you? Are you the one that sang the other day? Little flyer boy at G-A-Y, aren't you? Oh. Is your picture on those flyers, Mark? It should be. It should be on those flyers, dear. Are you coming to sing for me Sunday? Because I'm here this Sunday, but not next. OK, Mark? Please cut. We missed you last week. Mark sang at the karaoke the other week. And Mark says, Primark is always too busy, Chris. The problem is people just throw clothes on the floor and it never gets picked up, although clothes aren't too bad. Well, as you can see from my clothes. Actually, I went to the one in Lincoln. Because that's where my sister lives, Mark. And uh, I was up there um, on, su on Monday and Tuesday this week. Because we went up Monday... <laughs> Um, to take my nephew's children and my niece's child uh, to uh, an under-10 theme park called Sundown. Sundown Adventure Park for the under-10s. And it's all been Christmasified, and they go and see Santa Claus. I had a lovely time. But no present from me for Santa Claus. I was so disappointed. There you are. There's my nephew and his wife and and uh, my sister was there. And I was there and there were three little children. Evie, who's one and a half. There was Harry, who's about six months. And there's George, 
who's my niece's little boy, uh, and he's about uh, about a year and two months old. And one by one, these children went up and sat on Santa's... Well, they didn't sit on Santa's knee. They just stood in front of him. And the Santa was really good. The Father Christmas... He was a nice old man. Bless his heart. And they went up and they got their little gifts. And I'm like, standing and he says goodbye. And I'm kind of standing looking at him. Waiting to be asked. What present do you want? And I was kind of ushered out the door. By the elf. So what's all that about? The elf, one of the elves that was helping him, just ushered me out the door. No present for Chris. Most disappointing, Mark. Perhaps you'll bring me in a little present. You'll give me a little something tomorrow. Is that right, Mark? Do bring me in something tomorrow, Mark. He says, yes, Chris, it was me singing, and, uh, and I'm away. Are you away tomorrow? God, so, well, I'm not there the next week, because they've got some charity going. If you're wondering what the hell we're talking about, I do a karaoke night on Sunday nights at the Black Cap in Camden Town. Uh, every Sunday night, 8pm to 10.30, 11 o'clock, OK? And it's free entry. So that's there tomorrow, which is December the 8th. But I'm off on December the 15th. There is no karaoke there on December the 15th, all right? Mark says, yes, I'll get you a present to replace the one that Santa never gave you. I can't wait, Mark. I can't wait to, to see what you're going to give me. I really can't. Thank you, Mark. I should push you up the list of singers as well. Good morning to Matthew. Matthew, who's in Croydon. Have you heard the news about Croydon? They're getting a Westfield shopping centre. Yes! Did you know this, Matt? They are putting a Westfield shopping centre, and not only is it going to be a Westfield, it's going to be bigger than the one in Shepherd's Bush and Stratfield put together. Stratfield? Stratford? Stratford. I heard that it's going to be bigger than the ones in Shepherd's Bush and Stratford. Possibly bigger than them both put together. This shopping centre in Croydon is going to be massive. But why Croydon? I mean, the place is a dump. <laughs> Croydon was, was used to, years ago, Croydon is a part of, uh, uh, just outside London, let me tell you, boys and girls, those of you who are not from London. Um, it's, it's, it used to be a very renowned place to go shopping. They had the Ikea there, which is still there, and lots of other shops. But some, somewhere along the line, it's, it, and they got trams. They got trams in Croydon. I love trams. If you ever go to Melbourne in Australia, they have a tram system there. There's a free tram in Mel Melbourne, and it's like an old-fashioned one. It looks old-fashioned, anyway. And I went on that, and I said, how much is this, please? Oh, it's free. I said, oh, where does it go? Oh, it circles around the city. And I thought, oh, hello, a free day out. I sat on this thing for hours, going round and round in circles. I started talking to the driver. To be quite honest, you know, when I got off the tram, I looked at the relief on his face. And I was, and I, and I, you know, I thought, oh, maybe he wants to w want someone to talk to to continue talking. And I went to get back on, but he pushed a button and went off quickly. But trams are fantastic, and they have them in Croydon. But something went wrong in Croydon; it became a bit of a dive. I mean, people like Matthew moved in there. Matthew, in Tr people like that moved into Croydon, and immediately the place just nosedived. Awful people, dear. Awful. Anyway, Matthew writes, paper bags rubbish because if it rains, the bag falls apart, dear. Yeah, well, you have to pick your things up off the floor, then, don't you? Don't get it wet, you idiot. Use an umbrella. Don't blame the paper bag. It's you. You're just being bloody awkward. It's you, Matthew. People like you in Croydon, no wonder the place went down. No, my God knows why, you know, they want to build a Westfield. I expect you'll be picked, that Westfield, I expect they have the security cameras everywhere. They'll pick you up straight away, mate. Yeah, none of your, none of your dodgy dealings there, pal. All right? That those cameras will be there, and you'll have your, 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 your photo in the system. I and mean, people don't have to watch these cameras anymore, Matt. 
They don't. No, they don't. What happens is that you walk past, they pick up your face, and immediately an alarm goes off, and then people go, you won't be allowed in there. I wouldn't bother. You know, I'd move now. No one wants you to go to their wet shopping centres and start your dodgy dealings and nicking in there, coming out with bags of this, that, and the other. A thieving bastard. <sighs> now, let me see. <laughs> very naughty today I don't know how we got into Croydon so I've showed you my socks I haven't got my hat with me where's the hat one minute is it in here one minute. oh well, I have got my hat one minute my green beanie hat I love it this is quite thick and only three quid I've been in I think even in sports direct they're like nine pounds each I even got the label on there three pounds I'm so happy with my purchases who fancies a day out to Primark? Eh? That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? We could all meet up together, ladies. My be oh, I'm oh, no, hang on, I don't know about this beanie yet now. I'm starting to look like the very boring Peter Andre. <laughs> Do you like Peter Andre? I quite like that song, Mysterious Girl. But I, d I couldn't name a single one of his other songs. I mean, how long can you keep going on one blooming song? That's a thing, isn't it? Mind you, Cheryl Cole made a thing of it as well, didn't she? Weren't they talking about her going back on X Factor? <laughs> Please. Well, she hasn't got anything else to do, has she? What does she do, Cheryl Cole? You know, i got to fight, 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 fight for my love. I wonder if she's got fat. What's she look like now, Cheryl Cole? No songs coming out from her. The gays love her, Cheryl Cole. I don't know why. What's all that about, eh? <laughs> um, Marge says are you starting late one two three four no we're on Marge no we're on <laughs> she's missing I don't know where Marge is she's not, not even with us this morning <laughs> oh Marge is it <laughs> You and Wendy seem to be losing the plot. Wendy got confused of the days yesterday. God. Uh, good morning to James Dean in Manchester. Now, Manchester is actually all right. I was pleasantly surprised when I went up to visit James Dean, you know, in uh, Manchester. When was that? Back in April. I did a little job in Ashton... Under Lime, is that right? And it was a DJing job, it was a charity event, and James organised it all, and I went up to do a bit of DJing, and they put me up in a couple of nice hotels. One was a really lovely place in Manchester City Centre. I, I, I think it was called the Grand Hotel, possibly the Grand, I'm not sure. Um, and that was really old-fashioned and ornate. Actually, to be honest, the rooms needed to be updated. But it was fine. You know, it was warm and all that. The shower worked. Everything worked. So that was fine. And then I went to this other hotel, which I actually preferred, which was very modern. But honestly, dear, well, I mean, I went in there on the Saturday afternoon, I think it was. And I, I was only in there for the afternoon to have a bit of a lay down. Because I have to have a sleep before I do my jobs, you know, because my clock's all the other way around, you understand that? Um, I, I, I do try and sleep for, well, I always sleep for two or three hours during the middle of the day, sort of around about four, five, six o'clock. And uh, I booked into this hotel. Well, I'm sorry, dear, it was like a knocking shop. You should see all these young fellas, young, gorgeous looking fellas and their great big overweight girlfriends going in there. Book it. And none of them were married. It was shocking, dear. Cues of them, dear, trying to get into this hotel. I thought, where on earth have you put me, dear? But it was all right. Lovely big room, very comfortable. And I was grateful to be put up in a couple of hotels like that, you know, in exchange for doing a little bit of a DJ. Uh, I think we... Did I do that for free? I did that one for free, didn't I? I just wanted to see Manchester. Very nice. Lovely place. Loads, rows and rows of little houses with little gardens. Proper houses, you know, terraced houses. Not like Croydon with tower blocks. I hate tower blocks. I really hate tower blocks. Anyway, James is with us this morning. And he writes, Hello, dear. Watching you live today. A rare day off. Oh, bless. He's got a day off. Uh, we have trams in Manchester. 
And as you know, they are quite expensive. I, do you know, you didn't take me on a tram, what, James, did you? Didn't take me on a tram. I was disappointed. And they seem to be extending the trams while I was there. I don't know how far out they go now. Um, <laughs> on the... <laughs> On the subject of, 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 of kind of, you know, building your career on one song, I'm not going to say that, no. No, because she's my friend. Absolutely not. You say it on your show, James. James does a little show on a small community station. You know, it just, just goes, not global like this. This global radio and television spectacular that you can join us with every week. James, have you seen any of my short videos? I do short videos every single day now, two or three minutes long. I've already done tomorrow's one. You'll enjoy that. It involves me dancing. Yes. I shall be dancing tomorrow. Uh, Matt Martin says, In summer, it's normally plus 27 degrees. Oh, well, that's quite pleasant. I might come one summer, Matt. Meet your lovely wife. Have you got children? I can't remember if you've got any children yet. No, oh, what are you doing, Marge? Oh, God, Marge is not even with us. Try... Logging off the page and clicking on this. Marge has not been with us this morning. I've read all her messages out. Um, oh dear. I don't know what Marge is doing. She's not with us. Nearly finished the show now. One minute. Let me just help out Marge. Just a second. She's confused, bless her. Uh, There we are. That sorts Marge out, I hope. <laughs> uh, are we sorted this now? One second. I think we're done there. At least, yes, uh, at least we're above zero in sunny London today. Yeah, it's about eight degrees at the moment, isn't it, Mark? So that's quite nice. Um, some emails here. James has sent this in. Uh, by the way, oh, you silly fool. I haven't even told you how you can connect that I have. I. You can join in the show uh, at any time by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, and indeed, uh, James, who's in Bexley sends a little email sent from his Acer Liquid E2. What is that? Marge still can't see us. Uh, poor old Marge. She's got trouble with her. She's not even with us this morning. Never mind. Uh, do try and keep with us all. Uh, yes, uh, James sends a, a little Christmas message. Thank you, James. We can do Christmas messages, that's allowed, but you mustn't put up decorations yet. It's far, far too early, OK? Uh, and James writes, Hi, Chris. Enjoyed your show last week. And the short daily videos that are you doing, um, is this just an experimental thing you were doing? Are these just short little shows? No, it's it's a new thing. It's, um, what would you say? It is additional. It is additional. Additional, okay? So as well as doing the long show, we do the short shows as well. Also, it was nice to hear Terry Turner again. He is doing, is he doing any shows at the moment? Yes, he's on a station called Fenland Radio. Fenland Radio, okay? I know you, uh, the Barry Manilow concert you were going into is in the USA, but Barry Manilow is doing a world tour at all, is he? Yes, he is. No, he doesn't really do world tours. He, 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 he does, he is on uh, in the States. Okay, so he's on in the States, and I'm going to see him, hopefully, uh, while I'm in Florida. Now, I do have, well, I don't have the ticket. Uh, because I'm international, you have to go to the... Um, theatre and collect the ticket either on the night or, or preferably in the afternoon because you don't want to be faffing about you know at the box office on the night so I'll probably go up there in the afternoon and get it now uh, of course my nephew will be with us on this particular holiday that that wasn't going to happen what was going to happen was I'm going to get it get the ticket 
um, order the ticket, do a little holiday while I was there, because it's all the Disney and all that, which I've done before. I've been lucky. I've, I've done it before, you know. Very lucky to be going again. And then come back. But my nephew showed an interest in the holiday side of things. So I asked him if he wanted to go. He said yes. So I'm taking him as well. But he is not going to see Barry Manilow. I did ask... I actually begged on my knees for him to come and see Barry Manilow with us, but he's not having any of it. So, he's not going to come. He did ask, rather sadly, if Justin Bieber was on there, or Justin Bieber. What's his name? Justin Bieber. Because he's a bit of a... It's one of those young things, isn't it, dear? Justin Bieber. But sadly, he's not on there either. So, uh, he won't be going. Now, I'm not sure that Jimmy will be happy with me leaving him in the hotel while I go and see Barry Manilow on that particular night. So I've kind of decided I, I, I'll judge it as, as time goes, you know. And if I think he's a little bit nervous to stay on his own, or he's like very unhappy, I won't go. But hopefully I will go, and I've got the tickets. Um, uh, he's also in the UK next year, James. I don't know if you know this, Barry Manilow is in the UK in... March, April or May, one of those. And I will be going to see him twice in the UK. Once with my niece and once with my two aunties, Auntie Brenda and Auntie Rena. And I've, I've bought some tickets and give them all a little treat. I'm going to see him at the O2 and also at Wembley. I've never been to Wembley. So I'm looking forward to that, James. Perhaps, perhaps, um, James, I can't remember. Are you disabled? Because if you are, then, then I would have thought you, you get... Um, there's special places for wheelchair. I can't remember if you're disabled or not for some reason. I think you are. In, possibly in a wheelchair. Are you? I'm just, sorry, I can't remember. But if you are, you could get... Um, they have special seating areas, don't they? And you could t sue to go and see Barry Manilow. What do you think? He said, very sad about the helicopter crash. It reminded me of the one that we had in Vauxhall, London, earlier on in the year. Do you remember that? Oh, my God, yeah, I remember that. Which was all very sad as well. Um, it's also very worrying about the safety of these things. Well, I think... I, I, I think those things are quite safe helicopters. Don't know why it crashed. Um... They say flying is, is, is the safest way to travel around, don't they? You know? So, don't know, really. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at actually taking my nephew on a helicopter flight in Orlando. I've been on a few helicopters before. If you've never been on one, let me tell you, they do feel very stable. Actually, much more stable than a small plane. Small planes, when you go on those, are a little bit bumpy. Helicopters are not bumpy. They're very smooth the way they take off, and it's it's almost like you're not actually moving sometimes. So they are quite safe, but you know, as with everything, you know, you have accidents. Cars have accidents. I had an accident last week, didn't I? Ah, when I got flashed by the blooming speed camera deer in Lincolnshire. Never mind. Shouldn't have been going so fast, should I? James says, also blockbuster videos. The stat are are disappearing from the high street by the end of the year, by the looks of it. I think with that business, it's very out of date. It just seems to be very cheaper buying DVDs, everything online now, and re instead of renting them out from James. Yeah, but there's so many places now that you can buy d DVDs, James. And also download stuff online. Um, what's that thing? Netflix, I gather, is quite good. I think Sky's got their own um, film downloading thing as well now. Am I right in saying that? I don't know. But yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, no point in going out to these places and getting cold and wet, going traipsing into a DVD shop where you can just order one online or even watch it. You know, don't have to physically have it. I I actually stopped buying DVDs um, a while ago uh, because I found I would buy them it, boxed sets. I've got boxed sets of Dallas DVDs, four or five years old. That the the the, the cling film is still on them. I don't watch them. You buy oh well. well I'll watch that sometime. And you put it on a show, and it doesn't get watched. I had a massive clear out a couple of years ago of uh, vinyl, vinyl records, and CDs and DVDs, all of which are sitting, but some of them unopened, sat in boxes for years, just taking up space. But this, this is never going to get watched or listened to. Out it went. Just chuck the whole lot out. Um. 
on the short video I did yesterday, okay, which you can find at uh, uh, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, that would be Friday the uh, 6th of December 2013. I was talking about payday loans because I was watching this program on the telly. Um, uh, 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 and and if, if you watch that video, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I was talking about. Um, people have uh, reacted to this. Terry. Terry up in Leeds says, on the subject of payday loans, it's stupid. I'm glad the government have drafted a bill to regulate these types of companies. However, there is uh, to be some responsibility to the people who are taking the loans out. I'm fed up with people seeing uh, on the news telling us how much they are in debt when they've borrowed £200 but didn't look at the APR. Well, the APR of these uh, payday loans is in the thousands. The highest one, this particular... I watched this programme on the telly, you see. Um, young, hung... No. Young and broke. It was called... <laughs> yeah, stop it. Young and broke, it was called, this programme. And it was on the subject of payday loans. So I watched this programme and then I made the short video yesterday about it. And the highest rate of APR they found was over 5,000%. 5,000%. Now, I must admit, a lot of the time I felt payday loans were taken out by stupid people who needed a bit of money to go and buy more drink because they'd run out of drink in a pub. There, were, there was a the one the one I spoke about was a girl. She was in a pub. She'd run out of money. She wanted two hundred pounds. She opened up an app on her mobile phone, typed in "I want some money." How much you want? Two hundred pounds. It'll cost you two hundred and fifty pounds if you pay it back within twelve days. Do you want this loan? Clicked yes. Five minutes later, two hundred pounds in her account. It was as easy as that. Right. And I thought generally it's it's for people that won't wait. They must have it now. And I have always understood the value of money. I don't borrow money. Never have. Only for property or a car in my mind they're the only times you should borrow money there's people on that program borrowing money for Christmas holidays drink drugs clothes they're borrowing money for all these things which in my mind no you save up for these things however I was quite shocked to realise I was partly wrong about this. There were also people on there who were borrowing money for food. Borrowing money to keep the light and the heat on. These were people who had no other option other than to do this. They had no food, they had no heating. And I thought that was very sad, and that was, that was, I, I, I realised then that no, not everyone is borrowing, get, borrowing this money for the wrong reasons. And you know, if you've turned to everywhere else, family, friends, banks, the social services, if you've turned to all these people and they've all said no, what are you supposed to do if you haven't eaten for a few days? So they borrow a hundred pounds. And it's when they don't pay it back in the time limit that I gather, because I've, I've never had one of these loans, so I don't know. 
when they, if you know if so you so you borrow it for two weeks i think it is or whatever you you tell them do you want it for one week two weeks three weeks four weeks whatever and as you know borrow 100 pounds uh for two weeks okay uh, in two weeks time pays 125 pounds and that's the end of it but if they can't pay it in two weeks time that's when it starts going up not only the interest then they get a fee charged for late payment a fee for this a fee for that and that 100 pounds can cost you thousands it's one girl on there, she's, she borrowed £300. And I think it had got up to £3,500 she was trying to pay back because of all these extra fees that were going on top. Which is just outrageous. But there are other places that you can borrow money from that don't have such outrageous fees. There are credit unions. Now, credit unions, let me tell you, it will not be as easy to borrow the money, okay? They do look, they do run checks on you. But they are, they charge 2%. I think it is 2% a month. Or 2%, a, I'm sure it's 2% a month that they charge. So have a look at credit unions if you ever do need to borrow money for whatever. But you know, this, this whole thing, borrowing from Wonga, there, were, there was another girl on there, she, she owed uh, thousands of pounds. And she, and the presenter was saying, well, don't you ask them what they want to borrow the money for? And I said, well, no. Well, don't you think that's a bit wrong? You know, don't you think that's, uh, or what's the word? Oh, what's the blooming word? I hate that, don't you? There's a word, I, I can't remember what I want to say now. There is a word in my head. Irresponsible. Don't you think that's irresponsible, letting someone come in and borrow money you don't even know what it's for? And I thought to myself, what a stupid thing to say. What the hell has it got to do with them what you want the money for? No! You went in and asked for the money. Don't start blaming Wonga the fact that they've given it to you and didn't ask what you want it for. It's nothing to do with them what they want it for. Don't turn it round. You borrowed the money. You know, I'm not a fan of Wonga, don't get me wrong here. Absolutely not. I wouldn't use them to borrow money. Five, two, three, four, five thousand percent APR. I don't think so, dear. But don't blame them when all they've done is, is, is process your request. You want £200? There you go. Have £200. Don't expect them to ask, what do you want them to do? Or what do you want it for? Oh, um, uh, I want to pay, uh, I want to pay my, um, my drugs debt. There was one bloke on there, wanted to borrow money to pay his drugs debt off. They're not interested. If they knew that, you know, what, what is it to do with them? They're not, they're not, um, deciding your life for you. You want to borrow the money? Borrow it. You don't? Don't. But don't blame them when they give you the money that you asked for. That's unfair. I mean, their APRs are unfair. But, y you know, don't expect them to be playing mum and dad. You should have learned that when you was a child. However, I do feel for the people who are borrowing money to get food and put the heating on. That bothered me. There was one lad on there of the, the the interviewer she was awful apparently she used to be on MTV I can't remember what her name is mixed race girl can't remember her name but she was just awful so this boy so she's sitting there interviewing this boy and um, she says um, so um, could you not have borrowed money from your family oh well my dad died um, last year or something like that and she said, all right. She said, what about your mum? Oh, she, she left us when we were two years old. And then she got off the chair, walked away from the boy uh, towards the door, crying, oh, I can't do this anymore, I can't do this anymore, you stupid gal. Well, you should have had the job of interviewing him then, should you? Stupid woman. How can you, do, how can you really take someone like that seriously? Running off. And the boy was just sitting there like a lemon. I did feel sorry for him. You know. If he was round here, and I knew where he was, I tell you what, I would have made up some sandwiches and blooming well taken them round to him. 
he'd borrowed money because he had no food and no lighting. But she was just awful, this, this woman doing the interview. <laughs> just run off crying. Stupid cow. So that, that was the thing um, that this email from Terry's about, the payday loans. And as I say, it was yesterday's short video. If you want to find that, go to Chris Reardon, uh, sorry, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK and look for the short video dated the Friday the 6th of December 2013. All right. Uh, John. John, who writes via Google Plus, uh, fifty pounds to borrow two hundred. Yes, because uh, one of the girls on the payday loan program, uh, she she borrowed two hundred. She was in a bar. She'd run out of money, so she borrowed two hundred pounds, and um, it cost her two hundred and fifty to pay back. Fifty, but the, she didn't seem to understand that fifty pound was oh, it's only fifty pound, only fifty pounds. She said, only. But it was £50 to borrow £200. It is a rip-off, John. But like I say, no one is dragging you there. Take the money and we're going to charge you. No, you've got to go there and you've got to click, yes, I want it. I wouldn't click yes. Maybe if I was desperate, like a few of those people in for food and water, uh, food and uh, uh, heating, then maybe I would. But I certainly wouldn't be borrowing £200 to pay back £250 just because I'd run out of money for drink in a bar. Certainly not. John Dickinson writes, Tell you what, I've always been brought up this way, to respect what money you have. And if you can't afford something, stop or save. Don't waste cash on these loans for a few drinks. It's pathetic. It is pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic to borrow the money for some of these things. It really is. Uh, Terry writes, um, Snap, John Dixon, although I did used to work for a doorstep loan company. Oh, oh, you were one, were you? But you, doorstep loan company, borrow £100 and pay back 152 Jesus Christ, Terry. Actually, you look like one of those. I reckon you are one of those people, Terry. <laughs> you know. <laughs> lending people dodgy loans all the time ok um, uh, James writes oh on the subject of, of his show on that small community station he, he says, to quote, our latest press release independent research conducted earlier this year confirmed that over 95,000 people have heard of and listened to the station on a weekly basis. 95,000. Oh, that's a lot, isn't it? 95,000 people. That is good, James. What do you want me to do? Send you a little certificate or something? I've reached 100,000 listeners. Another 5,000 and you would have done that. <laughs> <coughs> Sadly, not to his show, he said. No, I, I don't think so. Do you actually, do you open the phone lines at all for your show, James? Oh, that's right, yes. We are, if you are with us live this afternoon, um, and it's Saturday the 7th of December 2013, just coming up to 5 to 1. Where did that go? <laughs> 5 to 1. Then you can actually join in live. We have a Skype. Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. You can Skype in. And talk to me if you want to, or you can phone in. We have a local London number: oh two oh eight one double three six three five eight. Okay, oh two oh eight one double three six three five eight. Although it is five to one, I did only intend to do it an hour today. James says I've got the new Sky Now TV box. I've got that. I was disappointed to be honest, James. He says it's like the Apple TV box, but you get Sky Movies on demand and live. It's also got great apps to listen to radio. I bought the box for twenty four quid with three months of free movies. If I decide to carry on, it's eight ninety nine a month after that, or free if I just use the box for the apps. Right, so I got the free movies, James. I've got to be honest, there was nothing, there was sod all on there that I wanted to watch. I was disappointed. Um, um, it was I, I was... I was disappointed with the... with the apps on there. I mean, there was a lot of foreign films which seemed to be... Uh, free of charge, okay, 
Um, but it, it just just didn't seem to be anything on there that I wanted to watch. You know, what about you? Is there much on there? I think you're fine if you if you don't pay for the because I don't pay for subscription television, as you know, James. And there's plenty on the free systems. You don't need to pay for subscription television. Um, so I, I was disappointed. The Apple one I find is is far superior to the Sky one. Maybe there's some more apps on there that I know. What apps do you use on there, James? Do let us know, darling, all right? Um, Matt in Canada says, My lovely wife, Eva, and I would absolutely love to meet up with you one day. No kids as of yet, as we got married on October the 5th. But we're hoping that our first child will be on the way soon. How fantastic. We need more babies. I have three in my life at the moment. Evie Pops, Harry, and George. Yes. Okay. Um, email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is the email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk finally today I've got a, a long email from Marge with some questions for me she wants, she wants to know a few little bits about me so here we go hello Chris oh hang on a minute well, I've forgotten something what have I forgotten uh I shall find this. Uh, there it is. There it is. Now, one of my friends, John, one of our friends online, John, his friend has just opened up a travel company. And it's called JustBookExcursions.com. Okay, JustBookExcursions.com. Our first website, our new company, is Just Book Travel. We are members of the Travel Trust Association, so customers' money is 100% protected. We work with Hotel Beds, which is part of the TUI group. This means we can sell excursions, tickets and tours that First Choice and Tom Thompson offer via their website, plus a few more. And uh, what reps sell at welcome meetings when you arrive at the hotel. You know, the sort of thing, you know, like the little trips to, to, to the, um, uh, uh, perhaps, uh, things at Disney and all that sort of thing once you're in the hotel. We are trying to lower the cost of people's holidays and we discount many of the excursions, all right? So once again, have a little look at that, boys and girls. JustBookExcursions.com, okay? JustBookExcursions.com. Oh, Matt in Canada wants to know, have you been to the Caribbean before? Heather and I are thinking about going to the Bahamas on January the 21st, but I don't know anyone that has gone there before. I haven't been to the Bahamas. I've been to Barbados and St. Lucia. Beautiful places. I liked St. Lucia better than Barbados. Um, certainly in Barbados, when you get into the town centre, which is Bridgetown, bit of a dump. Bit of a, Bridgetown is a bit of a dump. St. Lucia is quite nice. Okay? So I recommend St. Lucia. Um, Bahamas, I haven't been to the Bahamas. So do let us know if you go there, all right? <coughs> oh, James says, I did a feature on payday loans. The trouble is the marketing material is very confusing. It can work out cheaper than bank charges for unauthorised overdrafts. I didn't know. I've never even had an overdraft, James. I don't, I don't use these facilities. I just wouldn't spend the money if I didn't have it. And, you know, I haven't always had loads of money. Well, I've got loads of money now. But I haven't got, I've got more now than I had. But I, I never did loans of any sort. I think when I was a child, you just didn't, didn't do things like this. I once used a, 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 um, a payday loan to cover a bank charge I wasn't expecting. It worked out cheaper. I paid it off in full and never used them again. However, I get four or five texts a day saying £500 in your account today. Just reply to this text. It's very tempting when you're in a situation when you need money. Yeah, it is quite aggressive, the marketing, isn't it? Yes. I mainly use the Listen To Radio app. Most internet stations are on it. Oh, is my show on there somewhere, James? Huh? <laughs> I'm excited now, James, that my show might be on an app. Okay, so, a long email from Marge. Hello, Chris. Wanted to write you a note to you this week. I love the two short daily videos you are posting on Facebook and YouTube now. Once again, don't forget, boys and girls, uh, subscribe to my YouTube thing for your daily YouTube short video, two or three minutes long. It's youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, you'll find them there. 
I find it amazing how you can take uh, how you can time your talking into that tiny bit of time slot. Did you learn how to do that in the schooling you attended? No, no, I just I just started doing these talk shows really. That that that's it, and the videos. Um, I didn't really ever think I'd be able to to shorten my my little shows to two or three minutes, but I've I've managed it somehow. Except for the Saturday one, because we like the live Saturday interaction thing. I'm going to ask you a few questions that seem to pop up in my mind from time to time. So here goes. One. I have recently found a free add-on to Firefox that allows me to watch a bit of the bbc.co.uk website shows. However, I found out that many of your TV shows are as crappy as ours here in the US. Question for you. To help me find something interesting to watch, since you and I do have many similar tastes, tell me some good shows to look for. I know of Dad's Army, which I already found already, and maybe sci-fi besides Doctor Who, or am I out of luck? Oh, wow. Um, well, I can tell you things I watch, Marge. I like Casualty. I like Atlantis. Um, I like Merlin. These are some some of these are old shows, okay, as well, which are not necessarily on anymore. So Merlin, I loved Merlin. Um, there was a thing recently on with with David Tennant, the Escape Artist, with David Tennant. Um, Simon Reeves, look at look up Simon Reeves. He, he's doing some TV shows. He did one where he was going for Australia. That's very good. And he's on again now doing some stuff. He used to come to my discos at the Black Cap years ago, actually. He used to be a young boy standing on the stage, um, just talking to me most of the nights. And then all of a sudden he appears on TV doing these documentaries. I love it when that happens. I've seen loads of people do that. Uh, there's a, another guy, Julian, who does all this camp stuff. He's not been on for a while. And... Um, uh, Paul Paul O'Grady, uh, I worked with him a couple of times as well. He's a nice bloke, Paul O'Grady. Smokes a lot. I can't believe he's had another heart attack now, or a heart angina or something. He's got another stent, and he still continues to smoke. Oh, what can you do? Um, I wish you could get over it, but there we are. Um, you know I like Dallas. That's not really English. I'm just trying to think of anything else. They're they're really the only ones at the moment. We have a lot of uh, really good period. Oh, Paradise. Paradise. The Paradise, I think it's called. That's on Sunday nights at the moment on BBC One at uh, 8 o'clock. And it's about this department store and it's period costume drama. Very good. So there's a few ideas for you there, Mark. Number two. Describe the man of your dreams. If that's just personal, skip it. No. Um, okay. About... 32 to 38 years old, tall, dark, toned. Personality. Can he make me laugh? All right? Yes. There's, there's the man of my dreams. How is Katie the cat? She's very well. She was in yesterday's short video. Did you see it? Katie was in yesterday's short video and she was purring, boys and girls, purring. Number four, when you come to America, do you have American cash already or do you just use traveller's checks when you get here? Uh, well, card, really. It's, it's all credit cards now, isn't it? I have a, a credit card that doesn't charge me for conversion every time because some credit cards, they will charge you every time you use it for a different currency. I have one that doesn't do that. So I, I, I tend to use a card, and then of course if you lose the card, then you 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 won't you haven't lost the money, have you? You see what I mean? And they get another card to you. I don't know how they do that, but somehow I've, I've, I'm always very careful with my stuff. Number five: How many days are you working now? How many hours? Uh, and do you ever get tired of constant music playing in your ears? Um, I work every every night. How many hours? Oh, well I don't know. It depends what you call by work. Do you consider this work, what I'm doing now? You'd have to include all the hours um, of preparation as well. You don't just turn up and play records. You have to 
get new music and put it on your system and all this, that and the other. So yes, quite a few hours every night. I never get tired of constant music playing in my ears, no. Have you ever ridden a horse? No. Never ridden a horse. Why did you want to ask that? <laughs> Seven. How many online friends have you made that you have actually met later on in real life? Well, I can count those on one hand, really. Suko, Millie. No one else, really. Two people. Two people I've met online. You mean Facebook and all that, don't you? Yeah. Two people. Um, knowing that online people might be a danger to meet in person, or do you not really care? Don't care. Don't really care. Why would they be a danger? Unless they're lying. I suppose people could lie, aren't they? Are you afraid any time at night being in the dark coming home thinking someone might attack or rob you? No. Not really. It's very quiet. It's very quiet where I live. No, I don't think so. Eight. I'm craving a ham sandwich but don't want to eat meat. What's good alternatives to meat sandwiches? Corn. Corn do some very good alternatives to meat sandwiches, Marge. What other pets have you had in your life besides cats? Oh, we had a couple of dogs, but that didn't quite work out. One very quickly became ill, unfortunately. And the other one was just completely uncontrollable. So no, not, not dogs. Uh, goldfish, I had goldfish. And budgerigars. I had two budgerigars. George the budgie, who was yellow. And Benny the budgie, who was blue. Benny was called Benny because we got him from Bentles, which was a shop, which is a shopping centre in Kingston. Finally, number ten. If we granted a wish by a genie, what would you wish for? Uh, my mum and dad to be back here, and to have some sort of relationship with my son, and to have a boyfriend. They're my wishes. Okay, if you have time for this email, my questions. Thanks. Have a wonderful week. Your Oklahoma virtual friend, Marge. There we are, answered all your questions there, Marge. See? Never be afraid to ask something, dear. Uh, James says, Paul O'Grady says he stopped smoking a few years ago. I don't think he has. I really don't think he's had... Uh, he, he's actually stopped smoking, to be honest, James. I could be wrong. Don't know. Anyway, that's it from the show today. Thank you very much for joining us live, boys and girls. Uh, don't forget, you can always find the latest uh, long live video at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Once again, those short videos, uh, if you want to find those, you have to go to YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Chris Rearson UK. And uh, as the new ones come out, and I've already done uh, tomorrow's one, which involves me dancing. Okay? Uh, I also announce them on both my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, and my Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. If you'd like to send in an email, it'd be lovely to hear from you, boys and girls. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You have a lovely weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.